Thank you very much, Mr. Robert. Please, uh, we have uh, our next speaker, uh, Mr. Adnan Abdulha. Uh, he's the director of budget directory from the uh, Ministry of Finance. Uh, what's your name, Mr. Adnan? He will talk about public finance. His presentation about public finance. Assalamu alaikum. First of all, we would like to thank uh, the university for inviting the Minister of Finance to give a, a quick brief. Now, uh, I hope that I will try to make it as quick as possible, uh, but I hope that we can show the applied side of uh, finance in Bahrain, of course. Uh, about myself, my name is Adnan Abdul uh, I've been in the Ministry of Finance since 2006. And I've been involved in preparing the government budget since 2007. Um, the applied experience and what we do in the Ministry of Finance and how it could be relevant to your work, whether it's in the economic side or even the financial side. Uh, I hope to make this as a, a dynamic session. Uh, as much as you can benefit from this session, let it be a question and answer at any time. Uh, even through the slides, and I hope that uh, it will be very beneficial for you. So, first of all, uh, I'll be speaking very quickly, understanding the fiscal policy. So, public finance is not just accounting, it's also, there is an economic part. Fiscal policy, and then we'll talk about public finance, and then resource planning in Bahrain, and key financial operations. First of all, does anyone know what is the fiscal policy? I want this dynamic. Go smack them. No one? Yeah? Policies regarding spending and taxation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And? Fiscal um, policy? Whether the government borrows money or not, and um, basically what sort of current account deficit the country is prepared to maintain or um, current account surplus. Mm -hmm. Deficit, surplus, borrowing of government. Bad. No one? All right. Fiscal policy, basically. If you will look into it in terms of definition, there are a number of definitions. Why it be the Ta'ari? Fiscal policy is an economic term. It defines the principles, the decisions of the government on how to set high level public expenditure and how that expenditure is funded. Uh, of course, not only the expenditure side, even the income side, whether it's taxes in certain countries or in terms of other fees and charges and how you can uh, uh, distribute the spending and if you have a surplus or deficit, if a deficit, how will you borrow? How will you finance it? So, fiscal policy mainly has, has have several objectives. The allocation of resources, of government resources, redistribution of in terms of income and how to fund the uh, major uh, sectors. Stabilization of the macroeconomic environment in the country. And also competitiveness. Fiscal policy is very well directly into the economy and how you can uh, bring FDIs and, and uh, of course, encouraging the medium, uh, small and medium enterprises. Um, of course, if anyone has any questions, please uh, do ask. Um, 
Yeah. What, what role does sovereign wealth play in fiscal policy aim? Sovereign wealth, of course, it depends on the structure of itself. Every government has a different structure of sovereign wealth. Uh, in general terms, sovereign wealth depends on how uh, much of the income of the country gets invested in a, in a, in a fund. And then how that fund, in term, legally, how will it uh, redistribute it in terms of uh, um, supporting certain sectors, whether locally or abroad. So it depends on different countries. You have several countries in the GCC in which their sovereign wealth funds are scattered all around the world geographically in terms of uh, investments in Europe or America or even in terms of financing, giving uh, borrowing to other countries. So it really depends on every country and government and its own policies and the size of that sovereign uh, wealth fund. So we need to talk, if, if we'll put it as, a, يعني, as an illustration. What is the fiscal policy? It is basically how the government uh, puts in mind how it redistributes the uh, priorities in terms of education, health, transport, logistics, youth and sports, infrastructure, housing. These are very well one side of the area, while on the other side, with the oil revenue, of course, as we all know, Bahrain is part of the GCC. It is a, a hydrocarbon, sec, uh, hydrocarbon producing uh, company, uh, uh, country, so it's very well dependent in terms of the government on oil. So what are the oil revenues that are there to finance those major sectors? Uh, welfare schemes, it's very, also, it's very important. Empowering Bahrainis policies on how to make the private sector the engine of growth. Unemployment, of course, subsidies, private sector growth. So you look into this, and this very well sums up what is the fiscal policy and how uh, policies could be set and how it could be financed later on. Any question? All right. So moving on to public finance. Of course, public finance, there are the revenues and there are the expenditure side. Um, maybe in this area, I will focus more on the Bahrain experience. Um, the structure of it and what are its main components. Of course, fiscal policy is, break, is broken down into three levels. You got the government revenues, investments and borrowing, and expenditures. We'll focus on the revenues first. This is currently uh, the structure of finances and revenue. When you go to any ministry or government entity in the future, if you decide to, to uh, uh, go through the career of government, if you're in a finance department, you will see this structure in the revenues. Um, the first part is the oil revenue, and then we have other uh, revenues which we call non-oil revenue, which is made of taxation and fees, government goods and services, investment properties, sale of capital assets, fine penalties, miscellaneous, and grants. I will go into those details in terms of breakdown of each. Um, no need to explain the sections and accounting items. This is just to explain to you, for the accounting students, you have all worked on journal entries, the accounts, and the statements. There are several items like uh, payment for insurance, like uh, accounts receivable, and so on. In the government of Bahrain, when you talk about the revenue chart of accounts, there are over 120 standard items. Yani not every ministry has a separate account, accounting uh, chart of accounts. It is unified within the government. <coughs> Let's take a look on the revenue. You will see in the gray shade, this is the oil revenue in Bahrain. The red is the non-oil. And this is all all of the information, you want the details, it is all uh, uh, available. 
down in the corner, you will see www.moff.gov.ph. You will find all of this information if anyone is interested in looking into further analysis. What can you see in this chart? So, yeah, which makes it uh, very well uh, uh, the challenge of getting any shocks in the, in the oil markets. So you can see in the 2009, when the first financial crisis has hit, there has been a huge uh, effect on the oil markets around the world, which has also affected Bahrain and the region, of course. Um, so basically, you can see that, of course, when we talk about the income of government, it is only the income of government, not the economy as a whole. When we look at the economy, the contribution of oil and gas is around 20%, while banking sector and manufacturing sector take up uh, also around 18 to 20%. So when we talk about the economy of Bahrain, it is very well diversified, uh, pretty much uh, at the level of debate. Um, but in terms of the government income, yes, it is uh, dependent on the oil uh, revenue. So, yeah. what is the expected columns for this year, 2015? We are looking for 2014 and 15. 14. Yes. What's the situation? 14, I think we are expecting 14, practically. Mm -hmm. 15, okay. Yes. But at least. Uh, yeah. Be yeah, 2014, uh, you can find it, uh, it's, it is available on the website, just published. Uh, it's around the levels of 2010, which is not the news. And of course, 2015, as per the international market, and you're well aware of the oil prices these days, it is also at the levels of the 2009. The level of 2009. You can so say. During the previous week, you agreed for a VAT tax, the value added tax to be implemented here in GCC countries and Bahrain. After three years? No, I feel, uh, some news, there is unofficial news, some rumors about the meeting for the Minister of Finance in the GCC countries during the previous week in Dubai or Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. And all, they agreed all to types implement. Of, all types of revenue uh, yeah. initiatives. There are set, uh, lots of lots of studies, lots of things in mind. Keeping in mind, any tax department requires a huge amount of investment, requires the know-how to be there, and uh, the countries in the GCC and regulations and regulations, of course. So, uh, if we will talk about uh, the studies, there are many studies that they have been looking into, and lots of initiatives that they are looking into. I'm asking about expected decisions. Well, you have mentioned it's at a GCC level. It's GCC not at the country level. So GCC level. I'm talking you, to you about a country level. So if we want to look into the details of revenue. Oil and gas, of course, we talk about there are the oil sales and gas sales. When we talk about taxation and fees, of course, we talk about custom duties in Bahrain and all administrative fees. For example, when we go to the, uh, uh, you issue the smart card or you want to issue the passport or renew the passport or the driving license, these are considered as administrative fees which go directly to the uh, government uh, revenue account. Government goods and services, any service uh, the government provides uh, with a price it will be uh, 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 entered into this uh, chapter of revenue. Investments and government properties is part of the uh, uh, revenue stream also. Sales of capital assets, uh, whether if it's uh, vehicles, furniture, and even some materials. Of course, fines and penalties also are part of the revenue. So basically, this makes up the structure of the revenue in the government. Any questions so far? Um, 
Yeah. I've just got one. I, I understand that BATCO receives about 200,000 barrels a day of oil from, from Saudi Arabia, Some, something like that. How does the country benefit or the government benefit from that? Is it the refining or...? Well, BATCO is considered as a company which has its own corporate operations, mm -hmm. but of course it is also 100% owned by the government. Mm -hmm. So BATCO, uh, there, is, there are two different uh, sides and uh, uh, I'm not aware of the details of that, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, there's a difference of the oil that gets extracted from yeah. the uh, geographic uh, mm -hmm. borders of Bahrain yeah. And the business that it does with other countries, whether it's Saudi Arabia or any other uh, yeah. business uh, or government. So, uh, talking about the corporate side, it is part of their corporate services mm -hmm. and how much uh, the variation or the margin of profit mm -hmm. that they will produce. But part of their task to help the or to uh, get the income of the government, it is mm -hmm. considered of what comes from the geographic borders of Bahrain. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on to the expenditures. Expenditures also, there are different categories. And as I said, this is standardized in all ministries and government entities in Bahrain. Uh, there is the manpower expenditure, services, consumables, assets, maintenance, transfers, grant subsidies, and repayment of loan interest. And these are all called the recurrent expenditure or what is internationally recognized as current or operational expenditure. Eighth part is the government projects, which is the capital expenditure. This is how the expenditure uh, chart looks like in Bahrain. And of course, this is all, uh, as I said, uh, publicly available information. And I will ask the question again. What do you see in this chart? Expenditure increasing over the years. And which part of the expenditures? Recurrent. All right. So the operation expenditure is increasing. And uh, at certain times, it's at the expense of projects, depending on how uh, the private sector helps into uh, injecting the economy with new projects and uh, 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 growing the economic environment. Um, if we look into the details of the operation expenditure, the first and biggest chunk of it goes to the salaries. So we're talking basic salaries, the training, the uh, allowances, and the pension uh, contributions. This makes up the majority of the manpower uh, expenditure. Also, we have the services which the government provides. Every service has an expense and therefore is entered into this item. Consumables, such as uh, fuel, stationery, uh, medicines. Assets, of course, as part of the expenses. Maintenance. There are transfers, such as uh, um, some allowances to uh, nationals and social welfare. And of course, last but not least, are the grants and subsidies and repayment of loan interest. As the Bahrain also is going through a debt, like any other uh, uh, government or individual or a company, everyone that has a debt has to pay interest payments. And this is where it is uh, classified. Project expenditure is very well, I think, uh, uh, self-explanatory. All of the major government projects get um, entered into this account, the government projects expenditure. Any question? All right. So revenue minus expenditure, what does it equal to? Surplus or deficit. And this is the major difference in simple terms between the commercial and public 
finances. Public finances, or let's say commercial, if the revenue is or the income is more than expenses, they will generate an income or a profit, let's say, sorry, a profit. While the government looks into a surplus. On the other side, when a company has expenses more, they get a loss, while the government has a deficit. There is no government that will talk about, oh, we made profits, or we made losses, because it is more into uh, uh, its own mandate to service the country. So this is the major difference, uh, in, let's say, in simple terms, between public finance and the commercial finances or conventional finances. There are several statements, or as we say, every company has uh, an annual report or the, uh, let's say, the quarterly um, uh, results. The government of Bahrain has what is called the final or consolidated final accounts. By the end of every year, or let's say the first quarter of uh, a new fiscal year, uh, the government issues the consolidated final accounts which shows uh, the entire uh, structure of finances and the results of the previous year. Of course, this is available in the mof.gov.bh website with its details, more than 40 pages of uh, notes and uh, statements and uh, different items at a government level. So, the big question is, if we look into expenditures and revenues, of course, uh, we will see in 2008 there has been a surplus of 477 million and then there has been all deficits. The deficit of course should be financed through debt, financing of debt and how you can uh, work on, uh, uh, on the interest rates that you can negotiate with. When we compare the Bahrain fiscal position with the GCC, um, it is not, let's say, it, it's, a good, it's a good picture for GCC nationals, but not for Bahrain. Uh, the GCC are generating surpluses, while currently Bahrain is on to the deficit side. But uh, this also shows the entire, the different structure of every country also, in terms of the finances and the income that is available. Um, Talking about Bahrain's planning side, uh, is anyone aware of how the budget is prepared in Bahrain? No one? No one saw the papers, newspapers, talking about the budget of Bahrain, the government budget? Well, in simple terms, I will just go through the cycle of preparation of budget. The first step is always the cabinet or the council of ministers. They look into or set the, sp the spending limits, which set the fiscal policy. <coughs> Government institutions then work on their strategic plans and how they can finance those strategic plans. And then it gets transferred to the parliament, which is the legislative authority in Bahrain for its approval and through the papers there are lots of uh, negotiations that happen in terms of the details of the budget and where are the priorities of spending and until it gets approved after the approval the ministry of finance raises budget performance reports every year on how uh, the budget got implemented and where were the spending items uh, spent in the final accounts. Um, I would not, I don't want to take much of your time, but uh, is it possible to take a bit more time, or is there are there any? All right. So that to make it beneficial to all. Are, uh, are there any questions uh, that uh, that we can have? Maybe, in general, just to put it all together, uh, we'll try to explain the fiscal policy in Bahrain and also the structure of finances in terms of revenue, in terms of expenditure, and, of course, 
going on to the budget preparation uh, process in Bahrain. Yeah. I, I spoke about forensics earlier. But who does that on behalf of the government? Is that the National Audit Court or, um, and also who actually audits government expenditure? Is it the NAC or do external firms do it as well? The National Audit Court is the uh, audit branch of the government and they audit or do the financial and administrative audits throughout the uh, government entities or any company that the government of Bahrain owns over 50% in terms of uh, 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 shares in it. Uh, talking about the forensic side, uh, forensic side is more onto the economy. Of course, there is uh, the uh, major mandate goes into the Ministry of Interior. There is a department called the Department of Economic Crimes, and they coordinate with the Central Bank of Bahrain if there are any uh, cases or suspicious uh, um, uh, activities going on. So there are the two sides. There is the financial auditing and administrative on government level, and there is, of course, at an economy, let's say, on a uh, more of a, um, a judicial uh, uh, side. But uh, in the view of the current decline in oil prices, what do people behind the scenes talk about how they are going to balance the budget for the next coming few years, given the fact that many people predict that oil prices will continue to decline? Well, of course, this is a challenge that is facing all oil producing uh, countries. Um, no, no, the rest course, they all have surplus, you mentioned over there. Only Bahrain really is getting the pinch. Yeah, correct. But uh, every oil producing company in a country whether if it's generating surpluses, the surpluses are much less than previous years. So this entails that there should be a number of initiatives that should be taken into, whether if it's increasing revenue or reduction of expenditures. So this is the major side of the uh, policies that are being discussed. Okay. <coughs> Any more questions? Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hadna. Right. And, uh, thank you. Yeah, and uh, also, again, we thank the University for this class. You're welcome.